Click, swipe, click, swipe. The endless cycle of dopamine hits the brain. Countless images upon images and videos upon videos stimulate your brain. Until you finally decide to look up at the ticking clock only to realize hours have gone by. Shocked and dejected, you decide it's time for bed and to get to sleep. Twisting, turning, yearning, you find it hard to sleep. You've counted sheep, breathed real deep, and yet, restless thoughts keep you awake until you inevitably reach over and grab your phone and begin the cycle all over again. Does this sound familiar? Welcome to the club of an estimated 200 million strong and growing social media addicts. According to statistics, the average U.S. adult spends 3 hours and 43 minutes a day on their phones. Consider the following. The average American lives for around 78 years. Now, let's say a third of this time spent sleeping, add an hour for eating and drinking, an additional hour for driving. These nearly four hours spent on the phone are hours of productivity wasted. We could have started businesses, charities, contributed to society. Imagine this issue compounded when considering it on a societal level and it paints a bleak picture. These things are killing us, literally. Let's take a look at the other side of the pond, social media networks. The giants behind some of our favorite and fastest growing apps, such as TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. How are they making profits? And how can they afford to offer these amazing services for free? A wise man once said, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. According to Statista, in 2019, social networks' advertising revenue in the United States amounted to 36.14 billion US dollars. This figure is projected to further grow and surpass 50 billion US dollars by the end of 2021. Like David Foster Wallace once said, it is named the web for a good reason. So the question then becomes, how do we wean ourselves from this digital crack? Are there steps we can take to distance ourselves from this hellhole of time and energy wastage? Is there a digital rehab available for us? Wait, what if I told you I haven't used a smartphone for an entire year? Yep, you heard it right. Now before I talk about it, I just want to be upfront and honest. I don't have all the answers, I'm no self-help guru, nor do I claim to be some sort of quick fix, but I'm here to tell you that it's definitely possible. In this video, I'll be giving you 5 tips I personally use and vouch for, along with how I manage to stay away and limit my time from these devices. Step 1. Get rid of it. Like Occam's razor states, the simplest answer is always the best. Some people just need to get rid of it. This may sound extreme, but in my opinion, it is one of the best and most efficient methods of getting the job done. Now, I've always been the type who either goes 100% all the time or just doesn't do it at all. So smartphones have always hampered my ability to get work done. I believe in the concept of the flow state. The flow state is a state of mind in which a person becomes fully immersed in any task or activity they are undertaking. But as soon as that notification bell rings, I jump away from my work and lose the focus I so carefully built up. It's almost as though we've been conditioned to respond to the stimulus, the craving, the attention, the likes. But as soon as we get it, we become easily distracted and return to the mindless scrolling we've become oh so accustomed to. Now let's take a moment and think about what exactly is the need for a smartphone. Most people will respond. If I'm in an emergency, I can call 911 for help. Or, there are apps that I need, like banking and Uber to name a few. Now the best solution, in my opinion of course, is to find the best tool for each job. In other words, for each function, find a single item. A phone should only be to call and text, and likewise, try to split up your needs by function. Keep your YouTube usage or entertainment to the television, assuming you have one and keep your work to a computer at the library or at home, and so on and so forth. 
what you will find is that this will decrease your dependence on your smartphone and lead you away from social media and time wastage. Now, always remember, the simplest way to get rid of a bad habit is just to distance yourself away from it. If this is too much for you, at least try leaving your phone outside the bedroom before you sleep and slowly increase the distance between it and yourself in a progressive overload of sorts. You will definitely find it easier to sleep and go about your day. Take it from me. These days, I sleep like a baby. Step number two, exercise. Get up and give me 50 right now. Nah, I'm just kidding. But try your best to get exercise. Prolonged smartphone usage and not moving your body in general leads to serious health issues like heart complications, depression, etc. Take an hour out of your screen time every day to exercise and develop a healthy lifestyle. And before you know it, you will have made a massively positive change in your health. I myself practice a calisthenics routine and have noticed immense benefit. The dopamine pleasure response and validation you get from your phone could be attained from your workouts. Furthermore, social media actually has a negative effect on your mental health. Apps like Instagram and TikTok heavily promote body dysmorphia and make unattainable physiques appear normal. Imagine after hours and hours of scrolling, you now expect body types that are clearly enhanced and juiced to the gills as normal, making you in turn feel worse about yourself. Disconnecting from smartphones and the click culture in general will do wonders for your mental. Think about how many hours you've spent on your phone that could have been spent working on yourself. Studies show exercise can also help you connect better with others. The confidence boost you get from it, coupled with the runner's high, which isn't only from running, can help when interacting with others. Third, you guys gotta find some hobbies. The reason you're on your phone so much is because you have the time to be on it. It's that simple. Fill that time with something else. My advice is to start reading. I know, these days most people don't like to read. However, if that's not your style, you can use audiobooks. The point is that there are some real gems of knowledge in there that will set you apart from the pack. Also, pick up a skill that will earn you some money. Learning a skill like programming or video editing is great as a side hustle. Like Skillshare, an online learning community for creators. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not actually advertising. But honestly, try learning and honing a skill or trade. If that's not for you, you can always buy and sell items. Try flipping used cars. Sales of both new and used cars have hit record highs in 2021. Whatever it is you do, make sure you dedicate your newfound time from disconnecting from social media towards your new side hustle. Finally, try thinking international. We're living in a global economy. Maybe there's a service you can offer to folks who desperately need it halfway across the world. Think about it this way. Now that you aren't on your phone for three hours a day, you've got three more hours in the competition to put into your passion and get more done. Step number four, special tools, or how I like to call them, tricks of the trade. Here are some tools I use on my PC to limit my screen time as much as possible. Distraction-free YouTube. This tool removes features from YouTube, allowing you to browse it distraction-free. I use it to remove the homepage and the trending page along with the recommended content. Now all that's left is the search bar, which is all you really need. LeechBlock NG LeechBlock allows me to block certain websites such as Reddit, Instagram, news outlets, etc. It blocks me from using websites where I mindlessly scroll and waste precious time. It also keeps statistics on how often you use sites on the block list daily. Currently, I average around an hour a day of scrolling, so that's still bad, but much better than before. These two combined basically kill time wasted on the internet. The final two I use are BlockTube and Max Tabs. BlockTube allows you to remove videos from the YouTube algorithm and make sure they don't appear on your feed. It recently helped me kick an addiction I was developing to a game called Rocket League. Follow me on Twitch, link in description. You'd be surprised how much the YouTube recommended tab affects your habits and actions. Max Tabs does exactly as it's called, 
it sets a limit to the maximum amount of tabs you can use at once. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have a habit of opening many tabs and getting lost in rabbit holes of information. So this extension definitely helps me. And last but not least, the most important tip is journaling. Journaling has allowed me to take my productivity levels from zero to hero. It provides a comprehensive way of tracking your daily tasks and goals and seeing how much you've completed. For example, on my journal, I write three to five tasks I want to complete every day. Depending on whether I've completed these tasks, I give them a check mark or an X. Once a task has been completed, I check it off and remove it. Once a task has not been completed, I move it to the next day's goals. Then, on a daily basis, I calculate how many tasks I've completed and how many I haven't, and assign myself a score. Under each day, I write a percentage of completions I've had. This technique has helped me move my productivity into much higher gains and has helped me stay off social media and get a lot more completion of my goals. Step 5 is to find purpose. I know it sounds cheesy, but you need to find a reason to be productive. Your raison d'être, your purpose, your drive. You need something to wake you up in the morning and help you sleep knowing the next day you'll be even more productive. Lack of discipline can often be attributed to a lack of purpose, passion, and drive. The most important investment you can ever make is in yourself. Never forget that. In conclusion, these are my five tips on how I managed to stay off smartphones and limit my social media usage for over a year. Some of the benefits I've noticed are the following. The most important one is that I can sit and think for extended periods of time without needing a phone and entertain myself with my own thoughts. Secondly, I can sit and read a book for hours at a time and be engaged with the content. Thirdly, you know the feeling when you're out in public and feel the need to scroll on your phone to avoid awkward conversations, like the subway or public transit? Yeah, I stare people right in the eyes now. <laughs> so in summary, the tips were, number one, get rid of it. Number two, exercise. Number three, find some hobbies. Next, my special tools. And number five, find purpose. Now, I'm not perfect. Time and again, I'll catch myself slipping. Maybe a little more often than that. But whenever I do, I always remember how far I've come. Thank God, take the L, and keep it moving. So those are my five tips on how I've managed to stay off social media for over a year. If you guys have any questions or concern, feel free to drop it in the comment box. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you loved it, give it a sub. See you guys next time, and peace out.